Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how I made my Regime Wonder Woman armor from the Injustice game. First, let's start with the helmet. In order to get a proper fitting pattern, I'm going to take some plastic wrap and wrap it around my head carefully. I will then take some tape and tape around the parts of my head that the helmet will touch. This way I can draw a pattern on with a sharpie and then cut the pieces out to transfer to my foam. I'm going to take that piece and transfer it to a piece of paper so I can draw the more detailed shapes out carefully. I want to make sure it fits first and once I'm happy with the way it looks I'll start drawing my pieces on. Her helmet is made of quite a few pieces so make sure you get some good reference art so you can see all the details that need to go into it. Don't forget to number all of your pieces and add plenty of notches so you can match them all up. If you are happy with the way all of your shapes look, then you will want to transfer them to some foam. Don't forget to also transfer your notches and your numbers. Once you have your foam pieces cut out, you'll want to transfer them to some marble next. You'll want to trace about a half an inch from the edge of the foam, that way you have some excess warbler to fold around the back. Also, don't forget to transfer your numbers and your notches so you can match up all your pieces properly once they've been formed. You can either use regular warbler, black warbler, or warbler pearly art. I decided to use the pearly art since it's a little bit smoother, but any will work. Here I am just heating up my warbler and forming it around each piece. You can see the notches and the numbers. And once I have them all cut out, I'm going to start heating them and matching them up. The warbler will stick to itself, so I'm just heating up the back edges and the front edges and then pressing them together. They should hold pretty well, so no glue will be needed. Just make sure to work out the bubbles and make sure all the notches match up and then I would put on a beanie or a hat and form it around your head. Next up is the breastplate. First we are going to form the booby cup and in order to do this you will need some sort of dome shape to form the warbler around so the shape you will need kind of depends on your breast size. Uh, for me I just kind of needed a small styrofoam ball that was cut in half. So I use that to measure around my warbler and leave, once again, about an extra half an inch to form around the ball. And then you're just gonna heat it up a lot and form it around that ball. Once you have your two booby shapes, you'll just put some more tape on like we did previously with the head pattern and draw on your shapes that you want to stick to the breastplate. I'm then going to take those shapes and transfer them to some craft foam like I did previously with the helmet and wrap those in some warbler as well. This is pretty much gonna be my process for most of the armor we're gonna do. We're gonna do a tape measurement around the body part, then cut it out of foam, and then wrap that in marble and then put it together. So that's what you'll see me doing for most of the pieces throughout this video. Once you have all of your breastplate pieces on, you'll just want to connect your breastplate. Um, you can do this a few different ways. I just used the top shapes to connect it and made it work. So whatever works for you. Next, I wrapped up some more tape around my torso and got a shape for the actual body of the breastplate. This is what the booby cups are going to be attached to. And once again, I have a piece of foam and a piece of warbler that I'm going to form and attach to the booby cups. For the gauntlets, I am just going to use some foam since it's more of a basic shape. I actually got an exercise mat from the store and I'm going to use that to cut my foam pieces out of. It's a little bit thicker, it's a lot cheaper than Warbler and it's more lightweight. So I'm gonna use this for my bigger armor pieces that aren't as complex of shapes as the helmet and the breastplate. I once again just made a tape pattern around my arm and I cut it into three separate shapes that I'm going to connect together with some contact cement. You can usually find this in any local hardware store, what you do is you brush it on to each piece where you want to connect it. So I brushed it on to the back of one piece and the top of another piece where I'm going to make that connection. Then you let it sit for about five minutes until it no longer has a shine and then you can stick it to itself. This is a really good glue to use because it won't melt under heat and it's very 
formable, and I think it just has a really good hold. So you'll see a lot of armor users use contact cement to connect the armor. And then here, all my pieces are connected. I just form them around my arm with some heat, and now they are ready to weather. And to weather them, I am just putting some marks in it, like I've been hit with a sword. Uh, what I did is just cut a line with a knife and then kind of widened it a little bit with a pin. And then I'm going to take my heat gun to it, and that will actually open up the split and make it look like a gash in your armor. Now we're going to move on to the leg armor. Here is my tape pattern that I have taped around my leg. And Wonder Woman's leg armor actually has three different pieces. There's a middle and two edges. So I'm putting inner leg, outer leg, and middle leg so I can match them up. And then I cut them out of some foam again, the same foam mat that I used for the arms. I'm going to heat it and fold it into shape. And then I'm going to glue the shapes together with some more contact cement. And for this part, I'm actually taking a Dremel and kind of Dremeling down the edges a little bit where the texture is. Unfortunately, this foam has texture on the back. Um, so to make it stick a little bit better, I'm trying to make it a little more flat. And here I'm just applying more of that contact cement on the front edges of the middle piece and the side edge of the side pieces. I'm just going to stick those together. And then I'm going to heat them and form them into shape just like I did with the arms. Here I am making the piece of armor that goes right above Wonder Woman's knee. And this piece will actually have some trim on it. So for the trim, I'm going to take my box cutter and cut a line halfway through, not all the way through the foam, and then hit it with a heat gun to open that up and it'll make some nice looking trim. It's the same method that I used for the gashes and the wrist armor. For the actual knee armor, I didn't wrap anything around my knees. I kind of just eyeballed a pattern for it. Uh, it's basically three pieces glued together with some contact cement. And then that one long middle piece will have some cardboard spikes glued to it to match her knee armor. For her eagle belt, I just wrapped some more tape around my waist and now I'm drawing a little eagle pattern on there to cut out. Um, since the belt is gonna have her hip pieces attached to it, I don't want it to be as thick. So I'm gonna use some thin craft foam to trace it to. And it does have some lines uh, along the edges of the wings and around the middle of the eagle shape. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing with the heat gun, but since it's such thin foam, I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife to cut the shapes in instead of a box cutter. So I get a little bit more precision with uh, heating that up. These are gonna be the hip pieces. Uh, they're just two pieces that uh, go on top of each other and then they wrap around your hips. So pretty simple there. Once again, glue them together with some contact cement. Uh, I'm dribbling the edges off the back again so I have a smoother shape and I'm just gonna heat form those around my hips. Her shoulder pieces are pretty basic shapes. I'm just making some rectangles and squares out of foam and then I'm going to wrap those in warbler. I want these pieces to be a little bit more sturdy so that's why I'm using warbler instead of the thick foam. And I've just connected them all together and numbered them and then heat formed them around my shoulder as you can see here. And for the very bottom piece, I actually ended up taking that off and using foam instead just to give it a little bit better shape because it was bubbling a lot. And uh, the shape I had actually had made wasn't correct. So you can see here, I changed the shape up a little bit and it's gonna be a little more sturdy. Now I am just drawing on the details that go all around the shoulder pieces and I'm going to add those details by heating up all of my warbler scraps, as you can see here. Um, in order to do this, you really, really, really need to heat them up really hot, so I'm using some hot glue finger protectors. Um, just keep heating, and then you're going to start rolling it into a thin tube, I guess you could call it. Uh, just a lot of heating, a lot of rolling, a lot of heating, a lot of rolling. It gets really hot and it dries out your hands, but I promise it will be worth it in the end. Um, and also make sure you have enough warbler because if you don't, the piece kind of gets thin and pulls apart. Uh, so once you have that rolled into the shape you like, start twisting that around the shapes that you made on your armor and you can connect them um, and make it look pretty. These are the pieces that go around her upper arm right under the shoulder armor. It's just two basic shapes that I cut and uh, glued together with some contact cement. And then I added some wooden stars on them as well, which you'll see later on. This is gonna be the chest piece that goes between the two pieces of shoulder armor. And it has a bit of a line shape on it, like a lion's head. So I cut the piece out of foam and then I traced it to some paper. And now I'm going to take some air dry clay and kind of sculpt a lion's head the best that I can. Um, I'm not really a sculptor at all, 
So I'm just going to try to take each shape one at a time and uh, do the best I can. So I've got his two, like, uh, I guess cheeks, his lips right there, and then a lower lip uh, that I'm shaping. And then I'm going to shape uh, his upper cheeks and his nose and his eyebrows the best I can. So my recommendation is if you're not a sculptor, just go piece by piece and try to connect them all and make them look somewhat pretty. It's going to be covered in warbler, so it doesn't need to be perfect or anything. Uh, but there's the lion's face, and now I'm going to start adding his whiskers, or his mane, uh, which I'm just doing by rolling up a bunch of little tubes of foam, I'm sorry, of uh, clay, and then I'm attaching them to his face. Uh, once I have all that attached, I'm going to let that dry for a day or two, and once it's dry, we are going to take a thick piece of warbler and heat that around the face. Uh, you're going to need a lot of heat, and I suggest getting some sculpting tools so you can press them down into the little shapes and crevices and really get that warbler shaped around that lion's head. There are a few pieces of armor that had these star shapes on them. And for the shapes, I just bought a candy mold off of Amazon. And I'm going to spray it down with some cooking spray and heat up uh, two layers of warbler heated together so it's nice and thick. And I'm going to form that into the shape. And then I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and kind of cut the edges around that star. And once you let it completely cool off, then you can pull it out of the mold. I wouldn't pull it off before because it'll kind of mess up the edges of the star. But really work with just getting those edges cut, and then you'll have some stars you can add to the armor. That's pretty much it for the armor pieces, so I'm kind of going to go over the sewing pieces a little bit with you. For her suit, I'm just using a basic one-piece swimsuit pattern and a four-way uh, stretch lycra in red. Then I'm going to cut that pattern out. I'm not going to cut the straps though because we have a breastplate so I don't really need the straps of the suit on there. Um, I'm just going to sew the two pieces together from the pattern using a zigzag stitch or you can also serge this if you'd like since it's a stretch fabric. Then for the gold trim I'm using a stretch shiny gold pleather. I just measured around the leg hole and then I cut a strip of that gold fabric out and I'm gonna pin it to the leg and then sew that on with a zigzag stitch as well. Just don't sew the ends of the tube closed yet because you're gonna wanna add some elastic around there. That way you avoid the suit bunching up in the crotch area and not looking funky. To get the proper length of the elastic, you'll just wanna stretch it around your thigh. Don't stretch it too tight, but stretch it a decent amount so it uh, has a good hold around the thigh. And then you'll just wanna slide that through the tube with a safety pin and uh, bring it out the other end. And then I would sew the two ends of the elastic together, shove them back in the tube and sh uh, sew the tube shut. And then you will have uh, some nice stretchy leg holes and your suit should be complete. You can also add some elastic around the top band so it'll hold to your torso or you can just pin or Velcro it to the bra you're going to be wearing under the breastplate. The choice is really yours. Just whatever makes your suit stay up, uh, makes you happy. I just safety pinned it to my bra. So um, like I said, whatever works for you. For her boots, you can either buy some red boots or you can make some boot covers. I just got a cheap pair of heels from Goodwill and I already have a boot cover pattern. The way I made this is I just take the uh, stretchy fabric and pull it around my leg as tight as I can while I'm wearing the shoe and kind of just pin that shape around my leg and my shoe. And then I sew it with a zigzag stitch and a serge and then I just slide it up over the shoe. And then once you have it slid up over the shoe, you can cut a little hole in the bottom for your heel to go through. And then you can use some contact cement or some super glue to glue the fabric to the shoe. For the last bit of sewing, I'm making the straps that go around the hip pieces that hang down, kind of like a skirt. And for this, I just cut out some thick strips of fabric and then I did a basic hem on the edge. I just folded over um, the fabric. This is actually a, an upholstery pleather and the pins will leave kind of a hole mark in it. So instead of straight pins, I'm using some um, paper clips to clip the edges down. And then I just go sew a straight stitch down the edges and I have my little strips. To complete the strip, you're going to want to add the little pieces that go to the bottom. I just made a paper pattern that I transferred to some foam. And then I transferred the pattern to some warbler and wrapped the warbler around that foam.
Then I heated all the pieces and stuck them together. And once I had all of them formed, I just took some hot glue and hot glued each piece to each strip of fabric. And then I glued all the strips to my hip pieces. This was pretty much it for the armor making. And once I had all of the armor pieces done, it was ready to paint. I did not get any footage of me painting since it was really cold dead of winter. I had to do it in my dark little shed out back, um, so I didn't get any footage. But what I did is I just sprayed all of my pieces down with Plasti Dip, about three layers. And then I did a layer of gold uh, basic spray paint. Then I took my acrylic um, metallics and did some detail painting. And then I took a gloss finish. This is a matte finish, but I had a gloss finish that I sprayed down all of the pieces with so they wouldn't scratch. And to connect them, I had this uh, basic belting that I used here. Um, what I did is I sewed all of my Velcro and all of my elastic to this belting so it glues to the foam better. And you're just gonna score your foam and then you're gonna use a hot ton of hot glue to glue these pieces down. Um, for the helmet, I used elastic. For the wrist, I used some belts and some Velcro. Uh, this is a little harness that I wear around my torso, around my uh, bra, and then I put some Velcro on it so I could attach the shoulder pieces to it. There's the Velcro sewn to that belting, and the belting is then glued to the armor. Uh, I just did two pieces of stick-on Velcro to the line, and I stuck those to the inside portions of the shoulder armor. And then I, for the breastplate, I took some clips and just glued them to the back of the breastplate, uh, once again with that belting, and that way I could just clip it to me. And I also did two pieces of Velcro uh, that I could attach to my bra. I had two pieces of Velcro on my bra, so it kind of held in place a little bit better. For the belt, I just sewed a bunch of Velcro to my suit where I could stick the belts on. And then I put some Velcro on the belt pieces. And that way it all just stuck to the suit. Don't Make sure you use sew-on Velcro to your suit. You don't want to use sticky Velcro to fabric because it will fall off. And for the leg pieces, I just took some of that belting and sewed some fabric to it and then glued that fabric along the edges of the legs so I could just slide them up over my boots and then I uh, was done. I hope this tutorial helps you out with your future armor making endeavors. I know I kind of glossed over a few topics, so I will link a uh, tutorial to punished props on how to attach your armor. And I will also link tutorials by Kamui Cosplay for painting and for breastplate making. Good luck and happy crafting.